I'm being interrupted by Michelle's little licking machine over here. Okay, Nolly, go play. Wrong direction. Hey, this is the Permaculture Pimp Daddy. That's Billy, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. Today we're gonna to do something special. We've been, I've been doing this recipe for a while and it's our fungal dominated compost tea. Now the areas where this is gonna be most beneficial is everywhere we have our trees. Actually, you could use it anywhere. But uh, here's a recipe I can't even give. I'm, I, I try to be as good as I can about uh, giving credit where it's due, but I've been doing this, this one for quite a while now. And uh, I wish I could give attribution, but I can't recall to whom I got it from. Anyway, the reason I know this works, and there's some debate out there as to whether or not it does. The reason I know it does is because I did like a side-by-side -side comparison back in Texas um, with the trees that I did treat with it versus the ones I didn't. Now, was it, did I have a control? Do I, did I do all those things to make it specifically scientific? No, I didn't do all those things. But um, from the evidence I've gathered, my own evidence, I think it works not only well, but quite well. So let's talk about the components for this particular one. Now there's gonna be more steps in it and maybe you've not even heard of this method. And like I said, I wish I could give attribution. All you need is like a Tupperware container. Now this one, I actually wrote compost on it because I don't need Michelle thinking it's brownie mix and wind up throwing some eggs in there and you know me paying the piper for that one. But all we have first is maybe a couple of cups of compost. This is the 18 day compost that William made a while back along with, it's combined with, the stuff we got out of the chicken tractor. So we're gonna dump that in first, right? Then we're gonna take in our, this is forest soil. Now, I think it's important that you get this from a healthy forest. And what I mean by that, try to get it, number one, remember your microbes are best when they are local. Get them as local as you, as you can. And you also want to get it in a place where you don't just have a monocrop of trees. You don't want to get where it's all pine or all oak or all anything. You want a healthy forest, which means it's going to have all seven layers of a forest, if you can find it. Now, to my benefit, right behind me up in these woods, that's essentially zone five on this property. So it's, uh, it's got a heck of a nice diverse mix of everything in there. So that's what we got here. So it'll express itself in the microbes. And then we want things that are gonna feed the fungal side of things, which is, I took some oatmeal, um, and I think this is non-glyphosated treated oats. If, if I guarantee it is if Michelle bought it. So we're gonna put about maybe a tablespoon of that in there. And that's really our, this is gonna be what we'll call, like with, with bread, you have a starter. Well, we're gonna call this a starter. You know, a lot of other folks do their compost tea. They just put it in a bucket and roll with it. So the last component you're gonna put in this whole thing, now the compost is a little bit moist, but you're just gonna add a couple of tablespoons of water. We're gonna mix all this up. Mix it up pretty good. That's well, not quite enough water in there. You want it just a little bit moist. What you're trying to do is to basically give the fungus an advantage, which is exactly what we want in tree systems. So we're gonna give this about three days. We're gonna take it. Now this is important. You're gonna crack it just a little bit on one corner, leave the rest of it down. That's all it needs is just a little crack in it. Then I'm gonna stick it in this bucket, which is gonna help shield it from the light to some extent. And I'll just kind of crack it a little bit too. I'll leave a little bit, a little of air in there. Now what I'm going to do, it's ideal that you take this and put it in a warm, dry, dark place. Well, if you know anything about me or if you know anything about where I live, the last place you're going to find this warm and dark in the summer at my house is going to be in the house. So I'm going to take this and put it out in the garage. Then I'm going to cover it up with a tarp and that'll keep all the sunlight out. In three days, we're going to come back to this and then we're going to get down to making compost tea. Okay. So it's been three days and um, here we are out in the garage and there's a reason I'm doing it here. Number one, we wanted a place where it's going to be generally, you know, generally in here it's about 75, 80 degrees right now. So we've had this bucket 
sitting in here for three days. And we should have a little fungal mycelia on the top of this if we did it right. And we do. Okay, so we're to the point now where we are ready to start brewing compost tea. Um, we're gonna take this. Well, you know, we're gonna make this a little easier. This is nothing more than a regular fish tank bubbler thing. I don't know what you call it, but this is what we're gonna to use to make this thing agitate. So we're gonna stick this down in the water. I got a little weight on there and it's sitting pretty close to the bottom. We're gonna take it, dump it in, try to get all of that in there. You can kind of rinse it around a little bit. Now, at this point, all we're gonna do, we're gonna let this sucker bubble, we'll stir it up a little bit. And we're gonna let this thing bubble for about 24 hours. Now, you wanna be really cautious in terms of the water you use. Remember, you're dealing with microbes in here, so obviously you don't want chlorinated water or fluoridated water. Um, any bit of that stuff is not gonna help. I mean, where we are right here, this is well water, and it comes out a little bit too cold for this type of thing. So we, you wanna get it to about, like I said, you wanna get that water where it's not freezing, but you want it at generally room temperature. Okay, the only last thing we're gonna add to this thing is a little bit of kelp. Liquid kelp is best, but I don't have any, and given the circumstances right now, probably that's something I can get overnight. I'm just gonna put about a tablespoon of it down in there. Remember, this is a fungal mix, so that's exactly what we want. So, that's done, we're gonna let it sit, then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so it's been the next day, and uh, I'm being interrupted by Michelle's little licking machine over here. Okay, Nolly, go play. Wrong direction. Anyway, I'll try to do this with her little, <laughs> her little licking machine working me over. Okay, so it's been the next day, and um, we took the little fish tank bubbler thing out of here, stick it off to the side, and now all we're gonna do is take this stuff out of here, and we're gonna strain it through here. Now, there's other ways of going about this. You can use, some people use cheesecloth, and they kind of put it down to the bottom, and then they just take the cheesecloth out of it. You can do it that way. There's absolutely no reason you can't, but if you use a filter, make sure that it's not any smaller than 400 millimeter like this paint strainer here so you want to make absolutely sure you're not taking out the very microbial life you're wanting to put in there so be cautious about that so with that said we're going to go ahead pour this into there okay and so from there we're going to take this out you can reuse it again we'll take it out that stuff's Looking nice. So, all we're gonna do from here, I got two buckets filled up with well water. Now, keep in mind that if you're in a city or you have chlorinated or fluoridated water, you wanna either not use it, or I think you can stick it out in the sunlight. I haven't, de I haven't dealt with that sort of thing in a while. I think you can sit it out in the sunlight for a while and let it kind of go away. But you want to make sure that your water isn't chlorinated or you're going to destroy all the microbial life you're attempting to put into the soil. So you want to make absolutely sure you don't do that. Now, in terms of thin thinning this stuff out, uh, some people say 10 to 1. Some people say 50-50. I go with the 50-50 thing and we've never had a problem. Um, so half full, half full. I can't do it right now because I literally just poured this stuff, got it out from the well, and it's pretty darn cold. So before I do that, there's two things I wanna do. I wanna make sure because this is fungal, I try to do it in low light or in the evening as it is right now, it's about eight o'clock. So I'll fill these buckets up, uh, probably warm some water up on the stove or whatever, just to go ahead and do it. And you wanna use this stuff, you don't wanna sit around. You wanna to try to use it as quickly as possible. And once again, there's debate on how, how quickly you should use it. I try to do it immediately. I mean, this stuff isn't from here to here, to where it goes into the pail and then onto the trees is probably gonna be a grand total of about uh, 20 minutes from now. Well, there you have it. There's our fungal compost tea going to work. And uh, it can be diluted up to 20 times. It can be a 20 to one ratio if you like. 
So um, give it a shot. Let me know how it works. Or if you have your own recipe, by all means, add it down below. So you can, there's also a bacterial uh, spray you could also use. You could use it as a foliar spray, use it in your garden. But out here, the fungal stuff, the fungal dominated compost tea works best when it's around your trees. There's some debate on how well it even works in your garden. Play with it, give it a shot. It's not like it can cause a whole lot of harm. So with that, I'm gonna drive on. I'm gonna finish up the rest of what we got down this little driveway here. And um, by all means, subscribe, tell your friends about us. Till next time, this is Billy the Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. We'll see you next time.